What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the ZMAM Show. I hope you all had a wonderful Easter. If you're into all that, which I am, but if you're not, that's no, all good, too. You had a great week. And here we are talking uh, The Ones Who Live, Episode 6. This is the finale. And, okay, so here we go. Spoilers away, and if we enjoyed this thing. So, I'm a first I'm going to put out there. I thought that The Ones Who Live, these six episodes, were entertaining. I thought it was a an interesting take on Rick and Michonne's journey we were all curious to where rick was and i think we got a lot of those answers we also got to hit a lot more on the cr and the crm the civil republic and then the crm which is the military the crm part and again i think there's a lot of great things that happened in this show i know that they kept toting this as this epic love story this love story whatever like that that's cool and whatnot, okay? Yeah, I'm all about some drama, I love some love, I love some zombies though, okay? And I love me some action, because that's what really TWD is. And when you're gonna bring in Rick and Michonne, I expect you to bring that factor too. Now, with that said, we did get some action, we had some fun times, we saw some some pretty cool zombie kills and scenes, and we saw the end to some characters like Jadis, which Lord knows she probably had it coming ten times over. Uh, but we could finally get to see just a little bit more how dastardly and crazy the CRM truly is and Rick finally makes it back to the uh, the gates and um, they welcome him with open arms and although questioning him just a little bit but more or less he confuses or he tricks Thorn into believing that he's there let me know what you know what the next phase is you know let's let's do this she's all about it at least for a while she is and then the general with open arms takes him in to give him the echelon uh, protocol or what that what the final act is going to be for this whole crazy debacle and basically they're going to take out Omaha the last surviving large city that could stand a poseable threat to the CR and the CRM's um, existence moving forward so much so that we learn that uh, I guess through analytical you know devices or whatever like that and people that work for the CR and CRM for that matter have decided that they can only withstand like maybe another 14 years of life before basically these million size herds make their way around and just start wiping everybody out and also through famine um just crops not growing in general the famine um and then just other dastardly things going on that it's just it'll end civilization as we know it there will be humans will be gone and all that will be left are the buildings and the you know past things that we used to reminisce about and then that would be all be gone and so you know that was a lot to take in and but although we knew rick and where him and Michonne stood on this. They were going back to expose the CRM to the CR, so that way they can probably hopefully get them in check, and that was a big if at that. But, uh, you know, this just so happens that Michonne is able to sneak her way in. She's presumably dead. At least that's the story Rick was uh, posing off. She is able to get in, and she gets in on one of these briefing meetings, which seemed a bit too easy. And here's a bit of my problem with tonight's episode. It was all going in a lot of ways a little too well. I mean, no doubt, there were some <laughs> there were some snafus. I mean, there was when um, Michonne went to Jadis's room and was trying to find the dossier on Alexandria. She finally found it a little bit more randomly because I was saying to myself, man, Michonne, calm down, calm down. You're going to find this thing. It's going to take time. But no doubt, she could spend a day in that room probably looking for this thing. But she finds it, some kind of steel meshed cat or whatever design which i guess maybe reminded her of the junkyard days at first i thought she was looking at the the poster of gabriel which i thought was more fitting i thought like maybe it was behind the gabriel picture on the wall but she wasn't even looking at that so i was just totally off in general but whatever so she gets that but not without getting caught by a letter that's getting swept under the door right as michonne's getting ready to leave hits her foot and uh, she gets found by another crm team member and michonne has to kill uh, them pretty violently and then, furthermore, uh, Rick gets to meet with the general, gets to hear about this whole plan, but Rick pretty much decides. And what I love about that scene, though, I love that scene, because yeah, there were some flashbacks going on, and they show the general, and remember he said, Grimes, tell me, your, or, I'm going to ask you once, and I'm just going to look into your eyes. And although they did play it out a bit long with the drama, whatever, but, you know, you can see the general finally was like, oh, shit. Like, no, you know, <laughs> you're supposed to be with us, you're not with us. And that's when he grabs for his weapon, and then Rick and him fight it out for a bit, and then he stabs him and kills him with his own sword. Shout out to, I think it was Ashley Chris, and I think you're the one who mentioned that, I think, in the comments, that he'll probably be killed by his own sword. I think it was you. If it wasn't, I messed that up, I apologize, but I'm trying to keep track. I should, probably, with a few comments I do get, but thank you for those who do comment. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, good call. I mean, the sword had significance, that's for sure. They spent enough time with it. Uh, and then they stuffed him in there. Now, I was wondering if they didn't kill him, like truly, like in the head. I was like, did they just keep him alive? Because when he was in the elevator and that other CRM 
uh, military guy gets in with Rick and keeps kind of looking over. It's just it, the, the tension was just already there. It felt like I was like, why is everybody so on on edge? But obviously, we know why Rick is, and the blood starts seeping up to the bottom. Now, I expected to hear the general start, you know, growling and grasping inside, and that would have made a lot more. I, I just think it would have been like that more like oh shit moment. But um, but anyways, Rick finally takes that dude out. Um, and, and again, then runs into Michonne, and they both are basically on board, knowing that uh, Omaha is going to be the next target. They have to do what they can to destroy them. And so we, we fast forward through it all. So let's stop. I know you saw the episode, and I'm just kind of recapping, but so what do we, what do we think about what's going on up until this point? I was enjoying it. I was like, okay, you know, a lot of, you know, little one-offs here, but I mean, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing, right? I mean, they're almost getting caught, but they're not. I'm like, but... Although, the, I feel like this place should be much more well-guarded. Like, it's kind of like what I felt in World Beyond. I was like, it's a miracle the CRM was doing what they were doing. They seemed like a bunch of inept dumbasses, to be honest. But, and th this was only proving that even more. But I'm like, but you've managed to wipe out so many colonies and things like that. So I guess maybe with enough dumbass minds put together, they get a lot of work done. This is possible. So let's go with it. And so basically, they're going to use gas and these explosives to take them out. So they, they get this idea... Or I guess Michonne does from the, uh, what she saw with Nat and the little tinker guy. And they rig up a bunch of grenades in this huge tent warehouse area thing of all these gas ex explosive devices or whatever. Now what I'm to understand about these is I guess there's an initial explosion and then the gas ensues what are like that. So here's, here's the thing, okay. Rick had a shitload of near misses tonight and i think i counted up to four and i'm sorry four in one episode that's four too many uh, in my opinion but let's just kind of go with this so they rig it up they rig the uh we find out that the general is actually a zombie they take his butt out and then the other um crm guy that was in the elevator wreck and they they pretty much turn that into like a human fuse right so they're gonna pull this wire and when that wire gets going it's gonna pull each pin off those grenades and then it's just gonna be a chain reaction done so right so they almost make it out, except Thorne starts getting wise, because Rick had lied to her and said that the general went back out to be quiet on his day before the main op mission. He likes to be alone. Yeah, I guess so, when you're about to murder about, oh, I don't know, 50, 60, 70,000 people. I guess I'd want to be alone, too, maybe. But anyways, uh, but obviously, uh, she goes out there and doesn't see the general there, and she's like, what are you up to, Grimes? And it just started clicking, you know, and all the things that he had said about Michonne and the little tiny lies in between. She knew he was full of shit. And so anyway, so she catches them as they're running out. I'm mean, about to foil the whole thing, which I, I didn't have a problem with that. I mean, that was, we knew this would probably happen, something of the sorts. I did feel like it took forever for those zombies to get out of that tent. I mean, it wasn't that big of a tent. And they were already kind of guiding them out of there. So there was a bit of time lapse in there. Again, I'm not trying to nitpick, but I'm just trying to understand how this timing and everything's supposed to ensue, right? Because these are professionals. I mean, the writing, the, 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 the whole choreography of this whole crazy mess, it has to go off well. Especially to sell, and that's why I kind of didn't exactly love the end of TWD for that matter, too. Although pretty cool and the big explosion stuff like that, it was neat, but it just seemed a little too neat, you know? And that's why I was starting to feel with this, a little too neat. And so basically, uh, they pull those pins and the explosion goes up. Now, that explosion looked freaking magnanimous. It was amazing. I was just like, holy crap. And it just set off that shock wave, and you could see it just, it looks like it just consumed all those troops out there. Now, I get it, it's a gas explosive. Now, I'm no military expert or explosive expert, but from all those grenades going, I know that probably wouldn't kill it. I get that. But that that chain reaction and that explosion with that many explosives, I don't think there would have been many things walking around, period. And let alone Michonne and Rick jumping underneath a tarp with some water. I mean, I get the water thing because maybe it's going to dull down the, um, the chemicals, at least for a, a small bit, but they survived that. So I'm like... Okay, I mean, right? We're not. I didn't expect them both to be killed. You know, we had to you know, keep. Someone's got to live. So, so they get past that. Thorn's still alive. She had a mask, which I didn't see that before, but whatever. She has a mask. So now she's tracking them down. Fights ensue, and this and that. So this when things start to get just a bit out of control for me. Sorry, down like the video. Do what you want, but the writing, guys. We expect a certain level of craziness because we have endured so much throughout the years, through all the seasons of Walking Dead. And true. Some stronger than others. But this where I just got, I'm like, listen, how much plot armor can one wear? Because I was ready for the, the fact and the possibility that Rick might not make it out of this. Hell, maybe even Michonne might not make it out of this. We'll, we'll hit on that in just a moment. So, 
Um, he starts getting surrounded by all those zombies right after uh, Thorin tosses some shots off at him, and they, they fight, and he gets his ass kicked a little bit, and uh, rightfully so, because he couldn't breathe. I got that part. And But then <laughs> he starts getting swarmed by five, six. Now listen, these walkers, as we've seen in the seasons, are fairly strong, right? I mean, they're just as strong as any other human, and, for, and they're after you, right? They have a purpose, and they don't let go. And he doesn't get bit at any point in that. And I was thinking to myself, well, they're not showing him get bit, but usually when they do that huge group shed, there's a hidden bit somewhere down the line. Uh, bite, excuse me, to him somewhere down the line. But there was no bite, at least as we saw as, as this ended out. So we made it past that. Then he also pulls a grenade. Now, I did a little more research because I had heard, and I've seen movies and actual accounts, where basically if a, grenade, if a body's in front of a grenade, uh, it could actually protect the people behind it. So, you know, if there's a body in front of me and the grenade's in front of I could possibly live. It's a, there's a chance, and actually, I've, I've read a really good chance from different accounts. So I was like, okay, I again, they say that's possible. So I'm like, all right, let's go with it. But damn, from like a foot, whew, I don't know, yo. Even the impact alone, I think you'd just be like days beyond belief. But he stumbles out of there, and then out come all the zombies, right, from all the little crevices and this and that, and other attack him shown. And they go to jump up on that container. Now listen, I'm a larger guy. I know, I gotta get more fit if I'm gonna climb my ass up a, a container. But even for the strongest, especially at that angle and what I like that, now I know Michonne was trying to help him up. Again, I know I'm nitpicking a bit, but I'm like, this is the third encounter now that Rick is getting out of. And we've seen people get bit for much less, much less. And, um, and Michonne manages to kind of help him up. I mean, I know he killed a few zombies and he was trying to step on them, but you wanna talk about close call. I'm like, how many close calls can one person get? It just, it started to get like, Okay, you know, because when the grenade went off and then went to commercial break, I'm like, well, he's not dead, right? And then obviously when they pulled him up, I'm like, all right, well, he made it through all those things. So, and then all of a sudden, then the news report starts coming in from the CR, talking about the CRM and how evil they were and all the people were killed and the other ones are being retrained and how everything's going to change. They're going to start letting people travel around. I mean, it's almost like, it's kind of like that total recall ending where it's like, Man, you know, that Mars has air, and Melina and Quaid are going to fall in love, and it just it just seems a little too neat, like it's a dream sequence. I knew it wasn't a dream sequence, but it just seemed too too clean. And um, and then the next scene we see is uh, Rick getting out of a chopper with Michonne and the kids. And I want to hit on that again, too, before I make this point. It's just that that was a lot of close calls not to have either of them perish. And I know they've done this before in the past, and, you know, probably because they want to keep them in their back pocket, you know, so... Five years from now, we can see what's old, old Rick up to these days, you know, or ten years from now and see, like, hey, what, whatever happened to Rick Grimes and his settlements? And they get another season in. I get it, trying to milk the franchise for every cent and whatever else it has. But I, I felt we were cheated a bit. I honestly feel, in a lot of ways, one of them probably should have died. I know, that's morbid and depressing, but really? After what they just went through? Can you honestly tell me that you think those two should have made it out of all that? I don't know, I just I feel very weird about it. Now again, we can we can disagree. Let's talk about it in the comments. Make me understand why you think it was great that they had, I mean, if you just say, because we want a happy ending. Fair enough, I like happy endings too. However though, in the zombie apocalypse, not normally. I just, I don't dig it, I just don't believe in it. It just doesn't, it never really works out. Plans never, ever really work out. I know I'm just going on and on, I'm gonna stop with that. So let me know in the comments what you thought. If you think I'm wrong and like, no, you were happy with the happy ending and they lived. I mean, it was good. There's another thing that I want to talk about now. Let's talk about when they got out of the chopper. And I know they ran over and uh, the kids first hugged Michonne. Man, did that feel like a long bit of time without them really looking over and acknowledge, even acknowledging Rick. Now, maybe I'm just being the bitter, you know, male lover of my bromance with Rick or whatever, you know. But I'm like... Judah, this is your dad. You've been waiting for him forever. I was almost thinking, and just work with me on this here, what do you think if maybe it would have been Rick getting out of the chopper first? So we see he's still alive, you know? Uh, not bitten or whatever else, because I thought he might have been bitten. He wasn't. And then, the, you know, and Judith runs over to him and just holds on, and they have that moment. Because, I mean, this is the point, getting Rick back. I mean, I love Michonne, but this wasn't really... I don't think it was supposed to be her story. I, maybe that... Don't take that the wrong way. I just don't really feel it was. This was Rick's story. And so, but but maybe together now this is their story, right? It's a combo. I just thought it'd be nice if maybe she, Judith would have ran over to Rick and they had that moment, and then maybe Michonne gets out just 
kind of smiling lovingly, watching them, you know, for a moment. Let them have their moment. And maybe even RJ kind of comes up and he goes, and maybe he says, are you the brave man? And then Michelle comes over and then just grasps them all and then they're the family together. I think that's a beautiful ending. It's a great tribute to Rick and getting him back and Judith finally getting her father back, RJ meeting his father, Michonne being the hero woman, strong beast that she is, getting out there. And she's not a beast, but you know what I mean? She's a warrior. She's crazy. And she gets out there and, uh, and saves him, brings him back. Uh, in mind, spirit, and physically back to his children. That could have been, I think, a little more legit than the way that awkward just kind of like, they were just hugging and not paying attention, and then suddenly it's like, oh, hey, Dad, I knew you'd come back, and it's just, I don't know, it felt weird. Felt weird, my opinion. Let me hear it if you want it in the comments. Let me have it. <laughs> I'm ready for it. So other than that, guys, I, you know, the episode, it was pretty solid, but towards the end, my wife and I both, we were just kind of like, okay, yeah, sure, I guess. Uh, but just because it just seemed, like I said, too clean. It was too easy uh, too easy in some ways when you think about all the things they've had to go through. I mean, look at those flashbacks Rick was showing. I mean, ripping that dude's neck out with his teeth. You, want, you don't get any more ferocious than that, right? I love those stories. I love the flashbacks. I love the general's character. And, like, he was, he truly believed in Rick and wanted him to be the one, to maybe even lead the CRM for the next decade or maybe more, make it become something better. But in order to do that, to destroy those around them, any other colony, they talked about how they had spies and infiltrators all throughout, basically seeing what they're up to and to sabotage them if necessary. That's some devious stuff, yo. And so I love the story about the CRM. It was really cool to see that. I love to see Rick and uh, Michonne back together. Episode score, I'm just going to give the ep ending episode around a seven. It was, it was fun. It had a lot of cool stuff going on. Honestly, I just expected some other things to go down. And hell no, I didn't want to see Rick get killed. And hell no, I didn't want to see Michonne get killed. But you know what? When the stakes are this high and they're going back, and when you're going back and you know that we're not, we may not make it out of this, well, maybe then you should you should probably follow on to that thought. Like, okay, what does it look like if we do kill said character or whatever like that? And I know that changes the whole dynamic of the story and this and that, but maybe it needs to be. Maybe this part of the story and chapters needs to be completed and done. Head on with the future with Judith, an older RJ, which, mind you, no offense to the child actor, he's not exactly awesome. It is about time to show a time lapse. I mean, look at Judith. She's already turned into a young uh, a young teenager, you know? Imagine what she's going to look like in a few more years. Let's see her kick some butt in the future years. I'd be cool to watch that and have her brother RJ along with him. That'd be cool. I mean, what's up? But, uh, but they do need to get a new actor in for him, probably ASAP, just to show a little stronger bit of acting. Yeah, that'd be nice. So... Anyways, that's my rant on this final episode. Uh, it doesn't look like we'll be getting to season two. Of course, I heard they did some kind of, um, not a podcast, but they got together and Gimple was there. And basically they didn't say yes, they didn't say no. But let's face it, the way they, they, they finished it off, I mean, the CR is going to be providing supplies to these um, these colonies. It looked like Alexandria's going to get, I mean, so it looks like all's going to be well in the world, at least for a while, at least until the next, next big bad, whatever that could be. Is there even a next big bad? And also, will Daryl ever get to meet back with Rick? Man, I know my wife wanted to see that. I true, I thought that would be an awesome thing too, but he's in Europe right now. How are we going to get back to him? So maybe Rick goes looking for him. Who knows these things? But uh, all I know is that that Euro European landscape and, and Daryl's show, that was pretty, pretty sweet. I'll be thinking about, I might jump on here in a week or so and talk about the three shows, um, uh, Dead City, and then the Daryl Dixon and also the ones who live and maybe rank them and why I think which ones are better than the others. If you want to go ahead and put your comments in now and tell me which uh, sideshow you like the most, which spinoff, please, please do. And uh, hopefully we'll have some other fun zombie action in the future. I'm Mike here with the ZMM Show. Hope you enjoyed the rant, although a bit extended. And I guess I'll catch you whenever we get some more news on The Walking Dead. Take care, everybody.